okay so one last video we need to know understand and study before ending chapter 7 which is if you remember when I talked about APIs I said that there is there are two common languages for creating developing and creating an API which are either XML or JSON JSON is most preferred and co more common and more lovely actually than the XML you'll see why in, after, in a few minutes then XML that's why Cisco only wanted you to know JSON in the CCNL not the XML so JSON stands for JavaScript object notation JSON it's a programming language used to create APIs so you can create APIs mostly it's used to create a REST based API and I talk about REST based AI I talk that it might be created by using a JSON actually this code or this language of programming language is human readable unlike XML you will see why in a few minutes it's lightweight short codes would give a benefit good benefit that's already in some human readable words and instead of some un understandable no codes used in XML that are heavy and very big codes just to do the same thing just to assign an IP address to an interface <clears throat> I'm sorry so this JavaScript object this object of JSON is about creating a container that encloses one or more name value pairs this is called this box is called a name value pair where there is always a name colon value and it's enclosed with the curly brackets so this is how an API written by JSON looks like <clears throat> okay and it can also be called a key value pairs so more information regarding these pairs the JSON values it's always surrounded by a curly bracket so it will always begin and ends with a curly bracket no matter how many pairs are inside it how many pairs you will see that there are one pairs or more than one pairs inside a curly bracket it's always a name value pairs okay if there was a string either the name or the value then this string must be enclosed with a double quotes like this one okay so this is a string the name here is a string actually the API starts with a curly bracket and there is a pair of name triple I the name is a string here so it's enclosed with a double quote and the value is also a string so it's enclosed with a double quote and then there is this that I have forgot about it okay I remember its name in my own language but I'm sorry I forgot about its name in the English okay most of you have been known so far and there is another pair of strings that's spaced by a colon and the third pair of strings and in the end there the API will be closed by a curly bracket okay <coughs> I'm sorry so for that no it's don't don't worry it's not that thing <laughs> definitely also okay has been 10 days in home haven't left my house for 10 days okay so the pair values types the that you will see when encoding using JSON to create an API or to create a script to paste inside a router or to develop some scripts and actually because you will see in upcoming minutes what I mean is that the first one is that what we have saw in the previous slide which is the string string the name is a string also the value is a string so you will start with a curly bracket definitely the name is string so it will need a double quote after that there will be a colon after that there will be the value which it's also which is also a string so it will need also a double quotes and then it will be closed or ended by a curly bracket so this is type number one type number two is called a string number the value here the number is not a string so the value won't need a double quote so it will be a curly bracket the word count which is a string here and the value is number which is 10 so it doesn't need a double quote it's number two number three is called string array okay for a range a variety of values of numbers where we have like class okay it's a string okay start definitely with this as class and double quotes colon and then we need this bracket 
to start the array of the values a b c d close the bracket and then close the curly bracket so this is the third type the string with arrays so when the values are of arrays the fourth type is called when the values are booleans and this is meant when we have the state of true and false case where either the value is true or false either true or false no third option is available at all in this case also just like numbers and also like arrays we will not need a double quote so it will be like maybe if the adjacency was dialect of routing of such interface maybe or such a subnet or network then maybe the value is false if it was ospf then it's true then maybe like allowed it through this metric or through to this such interface so these are the fourth most known pairs that you might uh, face and also the final one is called none you can see that you might use it you might not it's a very rare one depends on your programmability and developing which is you have a name of route maybe just a name and null to route something to the null routing to the null is some type of routing that we will discuss in the ccmp exam of course and basically it's only about when you route a prefix a subnet a network you either route it to a destination using some sort of routing protocol routing to the null is that create a black hole inside the router and through whatever subnet is coming from this source to this guy i'm going to such destination to this black hole so it will be placed to kill subnets to kill packets some packets that you don't want to redirect to what any other place but you will definitely receive them then throw them to the black hole they will be eaten and gone to the dark to the dark side okay so last thing the spaces here that you have seen they doesn't matter and the spaces here also this is a space space spaces all of these spaces they doesn't matter actually you can combine them with you cannot you just can maybe avoid using the space bar in your keyboard okay so for something a bit of advanced and maybe you do not expect to see actually in this course but i will just show you from the matter or perspective of curiosity is that you all know that there is a pack tracer of course we have used pack tracer for the first six uh, chapters in this course only chapter seven did not use it actually i could use some scripts with it but it's okay so far okay for Pack tracer, it has always been used, but you need to know, you need to understand, and you need to need to excuse Cisco Pack Tracer that it's only for CCNA students, for CCNA study. In the CCMP exam, the behavior of the advanced routing and switching options in the CCMP and CCIE cannot be applicable or done or achieved by using a pack tracer. Because pack tracer just gives you some identical and perfect responses. For some perfect and already known scenarios that's why it's enough it's very good for the ccna exam but in the ccmp exam you will need to use live gear you will need to buy devices you will need to use another type of emulators those other type of emulators are actually bringing the same image that's used for a cisco router and install it on a server and if you do not have a server we need to use some virtual machines that I have talked about in chapter 1 and inside this machine we will give it some CPU from my personal computer CPU some RAM, some hard, uh, a virtual network interface card, virtual Ethernet from my device okay I will cut these from my specification hardware resources of my computer and I will give it to this virtual machine operate this virtual machine and install a router upon iOS image or a switch iOS image upon this virtual machine and then I will have a real router that operate like these so the two most common most known most used I believe they have no third so far or maybe there is a third but rarely used known types of emulators are called the GNS3 this is much more common and known than the guy that I'm using here which is called the EVE next generation the EVE NG this one is unstable because it has a lot of software updates and each update comes with disadvantages actually I tried I really tried my best with it for more than a year in the end I've used this guy and it is much better for me so for you just to let you know 
just from now that in the CCMP course, when I establish the CCMP course and make one, it will be by using EFNG. How to use EFNG? Definitely, I will make a course just put it a formal for the CCMP course about how to install, build, and make an entire topology by using EVNG. So in the end, the moral of the story is that by using EVNG, I now have two real Cisco routers. Okay, things will be different right now. Uh, I will access one of them to some functions that they were not applicable by using the I'm sorry, the Cisco Pack Tracer. Okay, I will SSH to that device using Secure CRD, which is another software. You can use just the CLI. We will know that later in the CCMP exam. Okay, so let's see this one. It will be this way. Couple enters. Okay, hit no. Um, options, session options. Window appearance font. I believe 18 would be good for you. Definitely. And yeah, I hope just the font color is good. Okay, so this is a good, uh, a real Cisco, almost a real Cisco device. What I will do here is actually that I have interface Ethernet 00. So config T interface ethernet 00 ip address will be 10.1.1.1 and that will be slash like 30 uh, no shutdowns not needed in the evng images because interfaces are already up this is not really a general rule exit exit show ip interface brief i can see that ethernet 00 right now has this interface and it's up okay so a bit more space for me please yes thank you thank you darling okay so the moral actually and what why i use that is that right now when i hit show run this is some initial config that already comes with the device and this is where interface ethernet 00 got its config and etc but just in case i did show run Hit tab, which is Sharon comes from a running config, then shift and pipe in the keyboard and typed format. Okay, what will happen right now? I will get the show running config that we have just saw these configs in XML because the routers are written in XML. See, this is how annoying. And ununderstandable XML is okay. Yep. So these are the configs of the router under the XML language. Okay. So I will because we don't like XML and we don't want to like have this command. You see this long command just to give a time zone for the router. Yeah. This way, this is how XML acts. So I will copy all of this, okay? And I will use a web browser. I'm actually in a web browser. This is my web browser. And right in here, I will type XML to JSON. You have seen my website. Okay, this is the best XML to JSON converter, okay? Um, I will put my XML in here. Control A, delete. This is also Control A, delete. So, okay, so paste it. This is the config that I've just taken. XML to JSON, brilliant, converted. Control A to select all. Control C to copy. Please give me a notepad so that I can paste it in here. So this is how your router config looks like using the JSON. We start with a curly bracket. This is a string of name. The name is device config and you can see it starts enclosed with a double quote and there is a colon and then inside it it will start multiple pairs inside a pair. 
each one is relative to the other the version here is 15.4 PRIM 15.4 the services that are activated to this router are timestamps debug data time per millisecond etc and more and more config the config that I have did is that interface this is the name it's a string colon and there is an array that it has stacked because there are multiple parameters that I have applied to this interface. Those parameters are first interface is Ethernet 00, has its own config which is IP address. The value IP address is 101111. And there is another string which is the subnet mask and its value is 255255255252. And of course, it will be enclosed for the IP address, it will be enclosed for the IP section, it will be enclosed for the interface config, it will be enclosed for the parameters of Ethernet 00. You see, but at least I can read it by my eye and I can understand that there is fast, there is Ethernet 00, it has an interface config, IP config actually, which is assigning an address of 10111 and this subnet mask. So this is how JSON looks like. You can do it yourself just in case you had GNSS3 or EVNG. Otherwise, in the pack tracer, it's not applicable or supported. So this is the end of chapter 7. <laughs> this is the end of the CCNA. I can't believe I need to celebrate it. It's, I can't celebrate. Actually, I can't even shout. It's like 2 a.m. right now. But chapter 7 of the CCNA course is done for the English and I will start recording the Arabic soon maybe a few hours or tomorrow I just need to get some sleep and uh, I hope all of these complete four months from the very beginning of past December 2019 until this end of March 2020 we have started with uh, big hopes for 2020 right now we are praying and hoping for 2020 to end with good health and the least of losses that we can face on this planet for because of what we are facing so I hope just all of that was useful a little for you after all these hours I believe this is video number 84 85 such thing yeah I believe this is the number of videos that I have or I needed I can't really get rid of these glasses I'm sorry I wasn't like this before but anyway, and also, I will have just a short video to talk about what's coming next. Okay, so I can grab your attention, a short video that I will record. I hope the entire course is clear. Anything regarding this CCNA 20301 English course that is not clear, please comment down below. You have the entire channel with all its videos. You can comment wherever you like. You can... Uh, set a sofa a couch and sit down and just keep commenting inside my channel do whatever you like I'll be there to help you and assist you with everything that I can do and I'll see you in the upcoming video okay goodbye